today is a very auspicious day, disappearance day of Shamananda Prabhu. Gurudev wrote about him in the book. He appeared in, I will just go summary. He appeared in Midnapur. Just some days back, one devotee requested me for friendship in Facebook. Then we spoke a little and she said she's from Midnapur. Then I asked, you know about Shavan and the Prabhu? She said, of course I know, I am from Midnapur. It is like if you say to someone who's from Vrindavan, you know about Krishna? So like that, they, everyone knows because he's very famous there. Or if you go to that Middle East that, and you ask, you know about Jesus like this. So everyone knows. So he appeared in Midnapur on the banks of Subarna Rekha River. And then he had many different places of bhajan also later on. And he was born in high class, high class Brahmin family. Those Brahmins which are not even allowed to take water from some others. But here Gurudev explains that we should not judge by Shnap, by his caste. One, one may be dog eater, outcast, but if he's a devotee, he can purify his whole family and himself. But someone who may be high class Brahmin, but he, he's not a devotee, then he cannot purify himself and also his family. And there is no such thing that one is automatically qualified if he's Brahmin, automatically qualified for devotion and one who is not, he's uh, barred from devotion, no. One who has Sukriti and gets Sadhu Sangha, he can do devotion. So we should not think in that way. And uh, his father was also of impeccable character, means pure character. Krishna was everything to him and Krishna's devotee is very there. We cannot describe the virtues of his parents for fear of increasing the volume of this book. They had previously lived in Darenda, Bahadurpur, and people say that Shamananda was born there. Though his brothers and sisters had all died in childbirth, nothing could stop him. Even so, his parents brought him up in sadness and they called him Duki. Duki means unhappy. Shamananda Prabhu's parents performed an appropriate rituals when their time came, such as the first eating of solid food and the cutting of hair. As he grew older, he studied Sanskrit grammar, etc. His parents were overjoyed to see his talents and his religious proclivity. Shamananda Prabhu listened attentively to devotees when they spoke of Gauranga and Nitananda Prabhu's glories and would repeat them to others constantly. Shravan and Kirtan also. Whenever he listened to the activities of Gaur Nittai or Radha and Krishna, tears would flow in torrents from his eyes. Dukhi served his parents devotedly and they told him to get initiated so that he could fully commit himself to the service of the Lord. Dukhi agreed and told them that he wished to take Diksha from Hridoy Chaitanya in Ambika Kalna. There, going there would also give him the chance to see the Ganges and bat in it. His parents happily gave him permission to go. When Duki arrived in Ambika Kalna, he threw himself at the feet of Hridoy Chaitanya, who upon becoming acquainted with him, happily gave him Krishna Mantra. He gave Duki the Vaishnava name Krishna Das 
and so he was known from then on as Duki Krishna Das. Hridoy Chaitanya ordered him to go to Brindavan and take up a life of intense bhajan. Though Duki Krishna Das did not like being separated from his Gurudev, following his order he set off for Braja, first visiting Navadip and other places in Gauramandal, where he sought the blessings of the Vaishnavas. Order of Guru means bhajan. Gurudev said it is not always possible to stay physically close with Gurudev. If he gives order for some service, then by following that order, you will actually get association of your Gurudev. Gurudev gave example. He was ordered to go to Puri to recover that place of Prabhupada. So he could not stay close with Gurudev, but had to follow his order. That is actual uh, point. So after spending much time on pilgrimage, he finally arrived in Brindavan, where he became completely absorbed in the worship of Sri Radha Shamsundar. This is the one of the seven most famous temples in Brindavan. Uh, that deity was given to him by Radharani, that Shamasundar deity. And this is also the famous not famous, favorite name of Radharani for Krishna, Shamsundar. If you go to that temple, there is also now they opened behind, there is that cave where Shamananda Prabhu used to do bhajan. You have to go down by the stairs, it is narrow. And once you reach down, there, there are two deities, one is Shamananda, one is Rasikananda, he is there there as disciple and I always say this because I like it. You heard it already many times here on Skype. There is a sign there which says keep quiet. Shamananda and Rasikananda in bhajan. I like because the Guru is eternal. It is not that the Guru Vaishnava, they are eternal and they are only unmanifest. So keep quiet there in Bajan. In Brindaban, Duki Krishna Das studied the Vaishnava scriptures under Sri Jiva Gosami, who was the leading scholar of the Sampradaya. When Sri Dori Chaitanya heard of the enthusiasm with which Duki Krishna Das was leading the devotional life in Braja, he wrote a letter to Jiva Gosami in which he said that Jiva Gosami should accept Duki Krishna Das as his own disciple. Uh, like a Shiksha disciple. Guru, Diksha Guru will approve. Uh, like Mahaprabhu put Raghunath Das Gosami under Sarup Damodar. So then it is approved. Just as he gave titles to his other prominent students, Acharya to Srinivas, Thakur to Narutam, and he gave also Shamananda to Duki Krishna Das, the reasoning behind this name was that he brought great joy to Sri Radha Shamsundar. And then you also know after they completed their study of all the scriptures of the Gosamis, then Jiva Gosami sent them, all three, to Bengal to preach those books. So, and he told them, be very careful. They are very valuable, these books should not be lost. But you know the story. They were very careful when passing through Muslim countries, but they were not sleeping during night. And, but when they came to Hindu, they thought here it will be okay. So they took rest, but you know that king was a robber and he took. Later on, Srinivasa Charjo, he got back those books and also graced that king. He became devotee and many others there. So Shamananda Prabhu then went to Orissa that time to preach 
when the books were stolen and Srinivas Acharya said, I will stay here, you go. That time Shamananda went to Orissa. And then also here Gurudev mentioned that Hridoy Chaitanya was a disciple of Goridas Pandit. He is a Subal Saka in Krishna Lila. So they are worshipping in Sakya Rasa. And Shamananda Prabhu also in the beginning was worshipping in Sakya Rasa. But when he associated with Jiva Gosami, who is a Manjari, then he developed that desire to serve in conjugal mood. Uh, and this is not an offense, it is just further improvement. Because that Sakya Bhav is also included in Madhurja. Those qualities of Sakya are there and something more. And one day also, Shamananda Prabhu was sweeping the Rasa Mandal area where Rasa Lila is going on, and he found that Nupur means ankle bell of Radharani. And out of respect, he put it on his touching to his forehead and there it left some mark and did not go off. Because that was to be his now Tilak. So they are using that type of Tilak. It is called Nupur Tilak. In his spiritual family, they are using that Tilak. And Gurudev mentioned that Srinivas Acharya, he preached by giving Harikata on Bhagavatam and also Kirtan. And Narottam Thakur and Shamananda, they preached through Kirtan, wrote many songs, or they sang those which were already written by the Gosamis, and through that they attracted Jivas to accept the service of Krishna. They, they had heartfelt singing. And as a result of Shamananda Prabhu's preaching in Orissa, many Muslims also became his disciples. Because Jivas Rupai Krishna Nitadas, all Jivas in their real self, they are eternal servants of Krishna. These are only coverings. So when one comes in contact with a real devotee, then that natural attraction, devotion to Krishna, will be awakened in the jiva. The most important of his innumerable disciples was Rasika Murari or Rasikananda. Rasikananda was the son of Achutananda, the zamindar of Rohini village. So about him also we heard biography. And there are some other prominent disciples of Shamananda Prabhu. Their names are given here. Shamananda made disciples all over the place. A person can be purified by hearing their names. Radhananda, Purushottam, Manohar, Chintamani, Balabhadra, Jagadishwar, Udava, Akrur, Madhuvan, Govinda, Jagannath, Gadadar, Ananda, Ananda, and Radha Mohan. Shamananda was constantly immersed in the joys of Kirtan in the association of these disciples. Poets have described his wonderful pastimes for the pleasure of everyone. They are all pure devotees, so together, unitedly, they are singing the glories of Krishna and getting transcendental bliss. And another of Shamananda Prabhu's notable disciple was a yogi named Damodar, whom he converted to Vaishnavism. Narahari Chakravarti has written the following account of that conversion. Shamananda mercifully flooded the yoga practitioner named Damodar with devotional rasa. After becoming his disciple, Damodar constantly cried and chanted the names of Nitai Chaitanya, 
who could remain untouched by his ecstatic absorption. He danced, crying out, Bhakti is the best of all, because he tasted. After delivering Damodar, Shamananda continued to travel about, distributing the jewel of devotion to everyone. Devotee can awaken others. Our Tapasya Maharaj also was mercifully graced by Parangurdev. He was a great Hatha Yogi before, but by getting the grace of Parangurdev, he became devotee. And then you saw how enthusiastically he was doing Nama Sankirtan. Shamananda Prabhu put on a large festival at Darenda with Rasika Murari and Damodar, this yogi that is still remembered today by his descendants. When he left the world, Shamananda Prabhu turned over the service of Shri Gobinda at Gopi Balapur to his dear disciple Rasika Nandadev Gosami. Shamananda Prabhu's disciples and their descendants still worship his deity Radha Sham Sundar in Brindavan. This temple is still one of the principal pilgrimage sites in Brindavan. Shamananda Prabhu lived the last part of his life in Rishingapur in Orissa, where he continued preaching Vaishnavism. His earthly pastimes came to an end on the first day of the waning moon in the month of Ashar in 1631, our counting. This means on today's day. To preserve his holy memory, the branch of the Gauriamat in Midnapur city was named Shamananda Gauriamat. It was established by our Parangurudev, Srila Shanta Gosai Maharaj and Srila Bhaktivichar Jajavar Gosai Maharaj together. That is the place where our Gurudev took Harinam, initiation from Parangurudev. And for three days he was in ecstasy, not aware of external world. Then one day at 1 a.m. he knocked on the door of Parangurudev. And Parangurudev was surprised he came out. Then Gurudev fell flat and said, Gurudev, what kind of mantra you gave me? Like Mahaprabhu said to his Guru there. So those who are pure, they can get that frame by chanting. No offenses, no, they, they, then they can get that. We can get gradually by practicing. So this, I mentioned this devotee, I asked her, you know about this mat? She said, yes, I know. But it is little far from where I'm staying. I go there once in a month. The shaman of the Gauri mat. So <coughs> I'm going down to Shamananda Prabhu, remembering his deity there in Radha Shamsundar in Vrindavan, his Bhajan Kutir cave, going down and praying for his causeless mercy, this jewel of devotion to Supreme Lord. This, I pray, this. Then we are hearing Bhagavad Gita. We came to eighth chapter. As I told already yesterday, and I will repeat today again. Here it was written that when Brahma is very long life and he has days and nights. During his night, everything goes to sleep. So it was written, all, jiv all jivas, they go to unmanifest, avyakta. And then again, they will manifest. 
And then it was written that there is another eternal unmanifest, means by Kunta, when where one reaches, he will not come down anymore to this material world. So it was written here that they are different. This eternal unmanifest principle is so very excellent and superior to the above causal unmanifest principle that which was before Avyakta mentioned in Shloka 18, that even at the cataclysm, that external unmanifest principle is not destroyed, means eternal, external to that, that causal, because it is eternal. The causal unmanifest principles, principle refers to Hiranya Garba, and then in brackets it is written Brahman. And I was not sure, because I know Brahman is eternal, and Hiranya Garba is not Brahman. So then I went to check. Here, Hiranya Garba means Brahma, four-headed Brahma. So when uh, he sleeps, Jivas also sleep. They, they are unmanifest. But only the lower portion, those three upper, Satya Loka, Jana Loka, Tapo Loka, maybe Mahar Loka also, they are not destroyed. But Svarga is destroyed and this our earth planet and lower also, they are destroyed during, all Jivas they die during Brahma's night. But their karma is preserved. When new day will come, then again they will be manifested and they will continue their karma from where they stopped. So Hiranya Garba, I checked, Hiranya Garba can refer either to Brahma, demigod, or also to Garbo, the Kashai Vishnu, Hiranya Garba. So you have to know from the context, but it is not Brahman. Here there is typing mistake. Because Brahman is also above this material world that is also eternal, but there is no Lila there in Brahma Jyoti. Yes, so that eternal unmanifest principle is known as Akshara, means Supreme Lord, and his abode is not different from him, Vaikuntha, no limitation, no anxiety. When one reaches that place, he will not be born again. That Param Purush, the presiding deity of that eternal blissful realm, is attainable by unswerving single-minded devotion. O Partha, all beings sentient and insentient exist in him and he exists in them as Antarjami, means Paramatma. He is also known as the all-pervading Paramatman. And then Krishna told, that there are two timings when one will give up his body. And by that timing, you can understand whether he was liberated or he will have to take birth again. Krishna told, I will explain this to you. So now we will hear 24th. Agnir Jyotir Aha Shukla Sanmasa Utarayanam Tatra Prayata Gachanti Brahma Brahma Vidojanaha. Those who are versed in the knowledge of Brahman attain to Brahman. If they breathe their last at the time of Agni and Jyotis, the presiding deities of fire and light of Ahas, that is presiding deity of day, of Shukla, means the presiding deity of bright fortnight, and of Uttarayana, the presiding deity of the six months of the sun passing the northern orbit, 
that is to say the sun's passage to the north of the equator. Explanation. It means that a yogin attains Brahman and is never subject to rebirth when there is a coincidence of any of the principles of Agni, Jyotis, etc. with the cheerful disposition of the mind of a yogin at the time of his death. Uttarayana means the sun's passage in his northern course for six months from 22nd March to 23rd September. And Dakshinayana means the sun's passage in his southern course for six months from 24th September to 21st March. Hmm. They can be yogis, they can be in cheerful disposition of the mind because they already are above misidentification with this body and mind. They are in their real self, so they are always blissful. And for them, giving up this body is like putting off cloth. It is not uh, troublesome for them. Dhumoratri stata Krishna sanmasa dakshinayanam tatra chandra masam jyotir yogi prapya nivartate. Karma yogins are reborn when they pass away at the time when the deities of smoke, night, dark fortnight, the six months of the sun's southern path and the moon's orb preside. So those who are devotees and jnanis, they are already transcendental, but karma yogins are not yet, so they will have to take another birth. Explanation, after enjoying their heavenly pleasures for a certain period as a result of their pious deeds, Karma yogins are bound to be born again at the expiry of their virtues. Here, further, the bright six months of Uttarayana are compared to the fully Brahman realized state of mind of a yogin, while the dark six months of the Dakshinayana are compared to the state of mind of a yogin steeped in the gloom of nations. Shukla Krishna Gata Hyete Jagata Shashwate Mate Ekaya Yatya Navritim Anya Yavarta Te Punaha The paths of light and darkness are the two eternal tracks of the world upon which the departed soul shall have to tread. A yogin is not liable to be born again if he passes away during the path of light, that is to say Uttarayana, but he is bound to be born again if he breathes his last during the path of darkness, that is to say Dakshinayana. Naite sriti parthajanan yogi muhyati kashchana tasmat sarveshu kaleshu yoga yukto bhavarjuna. O Partha, a bhakti yogin, knowing these two eternal paths of light and darkness, is never deluded by the three qualities of Maya. Therefore, O Arjuna, be a follower of the cult of pure bhakti at all times and under all circumstances. Explanation. The bhakti marga or unsullied devotional path transcends the above two paths of light and darkness. He who knows this distinction and takes recourse to bhakti marga is never deluded by the three qualities of Maya. 
and hence is not subject to birth and rebirth. O Arjuna, just ponder over the troubles and tribulations that beset the other two paths, this jnana, that is to say the path of light, and karma, the path of darkness, and follow the cult of pure bhakti unconditionally and unreservedly at all times and under all circumstances. Unconditionally means you don't have any desires. Like, I will worship Krishna with this condition, I should get this. Some worldly facility or name and fame or money or something. So that is conditioned. Some condition is there you are doing, but it should be without any desires, only for the satisfaction of Krishna, that is pure devotion and unreservedly, means with all your senses, with mind and everything you should engage for the service of Krishna, and no hesitation. Uh, you are not holding back, but unreservedly, without hesitation without any reservation you engage yourself fully for the service of krishna knowing i am of him vedeshu yagye shuta pak sucheva dane shuyat punya palam pradishtam atyeti tat sarvamidam viditva Yogi Paramstanamu Peiti Chadyam. The Bhakti Yogin, knowing the good results accruing from the study of the Vedas, the performance of sacrifices, austerities, and largesses, remains unconcerned in and indifferent to all this and attains to my blissful realm, the ultimate goal of pure devotion. So he knows, but he's not concerned with that. His only concern is to serve Supreme Lord for his satisfaction. Explanation. O Arjuna, if you strictly follow the Bhakti Marga, you will never be deprived of any fruits accruing from the study of the Vedas, the performances of sacrifices, austerities, largesses, this I don't understand, and lar larvae, and from karma, yoga, etc. Moreover, this Bhakti Marga will entitle you to attain to the highest ultimate end of divine love in my blissful realm, the acme of pure devotion. So for devotees, this, uh, when they will give up their body, uh, it doesn't matter because they will remember Krishna because they are constantly remembering Krishna. So, uh, for them, it doesn't matter then when they will give up. Their, their goal is, their attainment is already known. They will attain Krishna. Gist of this chapter. This chapter describes the super excellence of unalloyed devotion and the attainment of the eternal realm whence, when, as Kohn said, no traveler ever returns. We read this as Kohn said, like settled there. There is some problem with this Skype here. Uh, Largesses. 
largesse means money or gifts given generously. Generosity in bestowing money or gifts upon others. So it means like that, done. The devotees, they also know about the utility of done, charity. But as we heard, when Parikit Maharaj, knowing that he will die after seven days, he came to the bank of Ganges and inquired, what is my duty now? So first, one sadhu there gave him advice, you are a king, so you do dan, you give charity. Then you will get. Another said, no, there is no time, only seven days time. How he will do charity in such short time? He said you, he should do sacrifice. Then another said, no, there is no time. How he will do sacrifice? He should do Gyan. He should study the, the Upanishad and meditate on Brahman. Then someone said, no, there is no time. He should do yoga, pranayam and this. And they give different proposals and he was confused and he also thought if I will accept one then another sadhu will become displeased with me. So then he thought I belong to Panda family. Krishna is fond of Pandavas. He has grace upon them. So based on this I will pray for the grace of Supreme Lord. You kindly please show me what I have to do so he prayed and immediately Krishna sent Shukadev Goswami there, his own person. When someone takes shelter of Krishna, wants to serve him, then Krishna will send his own person to give us that service. But unless this desire is there, and this Sukriti is not there, then it cannot happen. You cannot find bona fide guru by searching and by, by like this. You have to be ready. Then he will be revealed to you by the grace of Krishna. Krishna in the form of Guru will come. Uh, so then Shukadev Goswami said, no, you need not do any of not do any of this. You just hear about Krishna. I will tell you that you will get all perfection. So here Devotee knows about study of Veda, sacrifices, austerities, charity, all he knows, but he is not concerned with that. He is concerned with pleasing Krishna, and by this devotional service, he can attain blissful realm of Krishna. Then there are questions in this chapter. Uh, then this printing mistake is there. I have to find it. For chapter 8 questions. Mm. I'm not finding. Maybe back side. At the end of seventh chapter, maybe. Yes. What is meant by Brahman, Adhyatma, Karma, Adi Bhuta, Adi Deva, and Adi Agya? We heard. Mm. 
let's check the name. The eternal and unchangeable principle of Akshara is para Brahman. That is Brahman. Eternal and unchangeable principle is para Brahman, the Supreme Personality. Jiva, devoid of all worldly dross, is known as Adhyatma. The principle of gift and sacrifices as gift, this is charity and sacrifices, resulting in the production and growth of all beings, sentence is designated as karma. And then Adibhuta means the changeable and perishable. That is Adibhuta. Adideva means the universal Virat Purusha or the presiding deity of the gods and of the senses. Adi Agya refers to the indwelling guide of the Jivas known as Antarjami, means Paramatma. Yes, this next question. What is the result of recalling the Lord and uttering of Pranava at the time when one breathes his last? He will not be reborn, he will be liberated. So here in Shloka 5. Yes, he will attain Krishna. He will attain his lotus feet in the blissful realm. And also in 13th verse. Yes, he will attain the lotus feet in the blissful realm. What is the next question? What is the cause of attaining different bodies and different regions when one breathes one's last? That is, I think, whatever one thinks at the time of death. In Shloka 6. Yes, what you think at the time of death, that you will attain that sort of body. Or if you think of Krishna, then you will attain him. And here Bharat Maharaj is famous example. He was thinking of there, then he became there. Next question. To whom is God easily accessible and what is the result of God realization? 14, 15, Shloka. I think to one who is a devotee, Yes, I am easily accessible to that Bhakti Yogin who is ever intent on me and remembers me at all times and under all circumstances with single-minded and unsullied devotion. To him, Krishna is easily. We would have said it is very easy if you are surrendered and very difficult if you are not. who are conversant with the cyclic laws of Brahma's day and night. Those who know that Brahma's day is thousand Chatur Yuga, four ages together, and one Brahma's night is also thousand such, four ages. They know about this cyclic loss of Brahmas, day and night. What is the distinction between Uttarayana and Dakshinayana? We just heard when sun is above equator, that is light, and when he is going down for those six months, that is Dakshinayana. Is there any alternate means or sadhana for a bhakta? What is the acme of pure devotion? We just heard no, no alternate means. They will not do anything, those sacrifices, no. They will only do devotion to Krishna and acme of pure devotion means they will attain the service of Lotus Feet of Krishna in his blissful realm. And there are nine forms of devotion if one is surrendered, the Shravanam Kirtanam. So, 
nine, you know, and one can practice only one or many of them. Shukadev Goswami did only Kirtan, Parikit Maharaj only Shravan, but surrendered. Surrendered means I am of Krishna. I am doing this for his satisfaction. And Pralad Maharaj only remembering, and but Ambarish Maharaj did all nine. And these nine, they are further divided into 64. Rupa Goswami described in more detail. So following Kekadashi is one of limb of devotion. And, but in this Kali Yuga, one has to do Nam Sankirtan to get the ultimate goal. Harer Nam, Harer Nam, Harer Nam, Eva Kevalam. Kalo Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva Gutiraneta. Without Harinam, no one can get the ultimate goal in Kali Yuga. Jiva Goswami said, it is proper to do other devotional forums also, but you should do it with Nama Sankirtan. So here we heard that um, Parikit Maharaj was confused what he has to do. Then Shubhadeva Goswami no need to do anything. You just hear about Krishna and he got perfection. So tomorrow we will hear next chapter, ninth. But there is again this uh, printing. I will have to find tomorrow. There were some printing uh, pages there I will find tomorrow. How do you mean?